Let's go. Let's go, Facebook. What you gonna do? Okay, there we go. Good morning. <laughs> I was sitting here like three, two, one, and then it's this big lag before it like zooms in on me and actually says it's live, and then it starts jumping around the screen. Um, adjusting the so you can see stats or I don't even know. I don't even know. A com oh, that's my pen comment. I says I comment already. Good morning, y'all. TGIF, right? Is it really? Could it be? And a three-day weekend, too. Whether or not that looks like rest is yet to be discovered. I'm thinking probably not around here, for sure. I don't have time to rest right now. Anyways, um, let's hop in. Let's hop in, because my, uh, my mind is a little bit of everywhere this morning. So let's get in the Word and get grounded, right? Um, Listen, when you wake up and it just goes, right? It, it, it never stopped. I was going to say it probably. No, it, it didn't. It didn't stop all night. But you wake up and this is this and this is that. And I need to do this. And don't forget about that. And it, it, it. Immediately, yeah, those things are true concerns. Yeah, that's really our responsibilities and yada, yada. But it's also the enemy just, yeah, 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 yeah. Anything to, to refocus you or to defocus you, if you will. Anything to get your mind off the Lord and off His Word and off His will and the um, prominence that He is due in your life. Anything. It doesn't matter what. It can be It can be an angel of light, right? It can be that thing that appears so good and so sweet and true, but ultimately leads you away. Because, I mean, even the sweetest friend, even the sweetest child, even the prettiest flowers. I mean, come on, whatever, whatever thing in all its aesthetic, you know, charm, um, if it's not pointing you to Jesus, if it is in fact distracting you in the time that you have set aside for Jesus, it's not as good as it appears. Hello. It's not as good as it appears. But anyways, um, and how often do we follow it? Cause we feel obligated. We feel, we follow those feelings. We follow that heart. We lean on our own understanding instead of realizing, I don't have to be Martha right now. Hello, I, I, I need to be Mary right now. This is the time that I told the Lord I was going to be Mary and I was going to be at his feet. Come on. So don't neglect that for whatever just popped up in the moment. You know, be mindful, be intentional in giving the Lord your time and your honor and your worship and your praise and your adoration and you know, all of your cares, cast them upon him. He asked for them. He wants those cares because he knows what to do with them. He knows how to deal with them and how to shape you in the process and, and bring you closer and make you more like him. Oh, God, I'm so thankful for you this morning. So Luke 2.49, as we jump into the September, um, as we jump into the September, yeah, that. I was going to say the September chapter of the book or whatnot, but I couldn't really think. Is it a chapter? Is it a section? Whoever. Whoever. September 1st, Jesus the Watchman. You know, yesterday it was our Father the Watchman. Jesus the Watchman today. Um, and Luke 2.49 says, Jesus said to them, Why would you need to search for me? Didn't you know that it was necessary for me to be here in my Father's house consumed with him? Word 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 could we be so faithful y'all that those that are near and dear to us know where to find us when you know why would you need to look for me you know where i'd be you knew i'd be at the feet of jesus could we be could we be mary martha's frantically you know trying to do all the things and the things did need done but Jesus wasn't going to be there forever, and those things were going to be, right? Those things were still going to be there when he was gone, and that moment with him, those moments with him were going to be gone, um, and there's still going to be a floor to sweep and bread to bake or whatever, whatever, whatever. And we take it upon ourselves to make those provisions. Thank you, Jesus. We take it upon ourselves to make those provisions when he said, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. You know, um, had Martha been at his feet too, they might have seen another miracle of um, <laughs> sardines and hush puppies, as Greg Locke says, of, you know, 
fishes and loaves um, because they're going to be fed. But were they, you know, forsaking the most important thing in order to take it upon themselves to be provider? Um, you know, so anyway, it's just something to think about there that, that just dropped into my spirit. Okay, so why would you look for me? You knew that I would be in my father's house consumed with him. You know what? <laughs> what a honor, what a legacy to leave that that your children could know when they didn't see you. Oh, she's in her prayer closet again. When they didn't hear you, when they, you know, whatever the case, um, that they would know, oh, she's in the presence of the Lord being consumed with him. Amen. Ooh, so let it be unto me, Lord God. So glorious Jesus, just as the Father has been watching from the beginning of creation, so you are a watchman as well. When you were in your youth, you went to the temple to be in your Father's house. You spent your life watching what the Father was up to and only did what you saw Him doing. Hello? So vital it is to make sure that we are patterning, that we are following those footsteps, um, the divine example that we have, um, to the best of our ability, you know, seeking His kingdom and His righteousness first. So, you spent nights and days in prayer. You had fellowship and communion with the Father. You exemplified what would be ours through you. And for that, I am truly, humbly grateful. Yes, Lord. You had fellowship and communion with the Father. Nights and days in prayer. Just as you fulfilled what the Father was looking for in a watchman, you call us to follow in your footsteps. You stood in the gap for all mankind through prayer and through action. You were obedient even when it warred with the limits of your humanity. Even when it warred with the limits of your humanity. Even when, you know, how many of us have sweat blood? Because that's what he did when he so desperately cried out to the Lord in the Garden of Gethsemane um, on the eve of his crucifixion sweat blood that talk about some limits of humanity limits of humanity being in the flesh being in um, being a human you know God came down made himself to be one of us and remained obedient even when it war see when it wars when the limits of our humanity we're like Throw up my hands. I can't do that, Lord. Sorry, I can't do that. I know your word says I can. I know your word says you give me the power. I know this. I know that. We, we sit there and argue and um, refute the word of God. We dispute him. Come on. <laughs> Just because we don't feel, how often is it our feelings, our weaknesses? When he said his strength would show up, he promised it would. But we won't even push ourselves to that limit to find out. Imagine, imagine what we're missing. I don't want to miss anything, y'all. I don't want to miss it. Help us, Jesus. So you stood in the gap through prayer and through action. Action, action, action. Be a doer and not a hearer only. So um, you prayed until your will came in alignment with the Father's. What an example to follow. You interceded and intervened on our behalf, and you still do it. The Word tells me He lives to intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Good morning, Amber. So you are awake. Good for you, girl. I hear you. Um, what an example to follow. What an example to follow. As I follow in your footsteps, I too will become a watchman on the wall. I concern myself with your ways more than anything else. Everything else will flow from that place, the space of fellowshipping with you. How are they able, in the face of adversity, to remain true to the word? How, how was she, if it had been me, girl, I would have this, I would have that. 
How was she able to just walk away? She didn't even, he didn't even say anything. He just left it at that. He let he walked off and let him think he had, you know, the things that we think are so necessary to address in the natural. Go address them in the spirit with the Lord. Go address them with the King of Kings. Plead your case before him. Man is not your judge. Man can't hand you down any any type of sentence that's going to have any lasting fruit. Man can't right the wrongs. Take it to the Lord. Take it to the the man with the plan. Take it to the one who can. Amen. So um everything else flow from that place. When the decisions you make don't look like what everybody is doing, but look like that which um would please the Lord. Everything flowing from that place of fellowship with Him, with from that place of obedience and following. Um, what did we read just the other day? You will actually begin, and I've, I've repeated that again yesterday, it bears reminding every day, the more you seek and spend time with him, you will actually begin to take on his mind. You will actually begin to want what he wants. Um, and it won't be, see, it seems like such a chore to keep his, to keep his uh, commands. It seems like such a chore to, um, to do his will. Well, I gotta, well, I didn't, well, you know, um, I gotta do better. Do you have to do better or you just have to get closer to the best one, to the greatest? Get closer to him. Those things fall off in his presence. <laughs> Those things fall off in his presence and nothing shall be impossible. You know, he said, with man, this is impossible. And that's why it feels impossible when you're running around in your flesh trying to accomplish some things of the Lord. It's not going to happen in, the, in, the, in his presence in spirit. Um, and watch it. Watch it unfold. Mm. Okay, so enough of that. My two cents business. Let's get into Philippians 2. Philippians chapter 2 is where we're at. And let's see what God has to say to us today. We'll probably, you know, I said when I started this, but then I jabbered so long. Oh, no. I didn't jabber so long. It's because I was late yesterday. Um, I said we'd probably read through Philippians, and we didn't. I only read the first chapter because I was late getting on here. So we'll see two, three, and four left. It's only four short chapters. Um, how far we get today. Join together. Oh, excuse me. In perfect unity. Now see, this is going to come right along. I love you, Lord. Oh my goodness. This is going to come right along with what we were talking about. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Look at how much encouragement you found in your relationship with the Anointed One. <laughs> you are filled to overflowing with His comforting love. You have experienced a deepening friendship with the Holy Spirit and have felt His tender affection and mercy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The very stuff, the very stuff, y'all. So I'm asking you, my friends, that you be joined together in perfect unity with one heart, one passion, and united in one love. This right here, y'all, I just watched, um, <laughs> my mind just thought a good friend. He feels like a good friend. I've been following him so long online and, and listening and, you know, absorbing the wisdom and all. Um, of course, you know, you're going to disagree about something with everybody. But anyways, just think it out loud. Excuse me. Anyways, a live that was on last night that I caught a piece of, um, you know, of a, a man of God crying out basically to other men and women of God who he's um, affiliate, not affiliated, associated with, um, has has had fellowship with, has had dealings with, and yet um, there's these disagreements that he feels are really, you know, hard issues that need to be addressed. And the thing about it is the um, disagreements are dividing them when they should be uniting and he was basically calling them out saying hey let's get together in one room um 
you know, with Jesus in our midst, because we're going to be gathered in his name, seeking his truth, and he's going to be there, amen, every time, two or more, right? And, um, you know, so he was calling them out to do that, to, um, to test every spirit, to test every spirit, to get to the bottom of it, to get to the heart of the matter, and to, you know, cast out those things that are coming between them, and probably um, hindering the probably hindering the, um, what am I trying, the building, the forwarding, the advancement of the kingdom where they're concerned, where they could be uniting, where they could be um, collaborating more. Those things are standing in the way, those stumbling blocks. And so he's trying to dissipate those things. He's trying to do away with them. He's trying to get them together um, to resolve issues. So... Yeah, you know, we've got to be willing to do that hard stuff and realize um, if you keep just, you know, dividing, separating even um, from everyone over every disagreement, you're going to look around and be on your own. And um, that's not what the Word calls us to do. It calls us to unite in one love with one heart and one passion. Walk together with one harmonious purpose, and you will fill my heart with unbounded joy, Paul says. Unbounded? Yeah. Be free from pride-filled opinions. You know, be careful about those opinions um, versus what the Word actually says and teaches. And, um, and the Holy Ghost comes along and confirms it. He will every time. Seek Him on the matter, and He will. So be free from pride-filled opinions, for they will only harm your cherished unity. And that's exactly, I think he actually quoted some of this passage. Of course, he was probably King James, and I'm in Passion Transla Translation right now. So it's going to vary quite a bit. Um, don't allow self-promotion to hide in your hearts, but in authentic humility put others first and view others as more important than yourselves this is probably the hardest thing um <laughs> for me for sure uh, somebody come on i can't be the only one i really think um just human nature just sin nature this is this is that thing that trips us up so often um putting others before ourselves we don't want to we don't want to. We barely know. We don't know how to without the Holy Spirit. We don't know how to without the love of God, period. But even then, <clears throat> we struggle. That's when self really wants to pop up and say, but what about me? But what about me? What about... <clears throat> uh, my voice is clear and strong this morning in the name of Jesus. I don't know where that just came from. Anyways, um, you know, we want to... <clears throat> <clears throat> we want to pop up, the flesh wants to pop up and say, what about me? But I did this, and, I, and then we'll get to a point where we'll say, okay, enough is enough. I've been humble. I've been submitted. I've done this. I've done that. But, you know, and um, <laughs> I mean, Jesus endured an awful lot for us, y'all. We've got footsteps to follow. So don't allow self-promotion to hide in your hearts, but in authentic humility. Not that fake stuff that goes on and on about, um, I'm so low, I'm so this, I'm so that. I'm so humble. I'm so humble. I'm so humble. Um, I think it was Moses that said he was the humblest. He was writing and said this was the most humble man on earth, but he wrote it of himself. Um, <laughs> I mean, come on. It, a line doesn't have to ever tell anybody it's a line. Um you know, some things go without saying. And when you're when you're constantly proclaiming something, it's probably because it's not obvious. So therefore, you're probably, and you know, go ahead and speak it in the name of Jesus into action. But don't don't be trying to broadcast it to convince somebody else when the actions aren't backing it up. That's the thing. Are the actions backing it up? So not that false humi humility, humidity. <laughs> Humility, but in authentic humility, put others first. View others as more important than yourselves. Abandon every display of selfishness. 
possess a greater concern excuse me for what others for what matters to others instead of your own interests and consider the example that Jesus the anointed one has set before us let his mindset become your motivation And see, so often, and I speak this from firsthand because it crosses my mind a lot. And it's a thing that God is working out of me, crushing out of me even. Um, you'll read something like this or hear it read and think of somebody else that needs to follow it, right? Think of how somebody else is not. <laughs> that is the very thing, okay, that it's addressing is that the, look at yourself you can't change them you can't do one thing but be an example of the lord jesus be his hands and feet and you're not going to do that by by trying to figure out how to fix them you're going to do that by being in his presence drawing near to him being emptied of yourself and filled with him um, in order to shine his light for his light to shine through you into their darkness um but, you know, you hear such things and think, well, if so-and-so had been that way, then I would have, okay, already, already you're taking it to the wrong um, inspection, right? You're, you're already going the wrong direction with it. Look at self. What could I have done differently? And um, that's one that I really, like I said, it, considering others more important than ourselves, probably the hardest thing ever. <laughs> seriously so let his mindset become your motivation consider the example that Jesus the anointed one has set before us let his mindset become your motivation possess a greater concern for what matters to others instead of your own interests that right there like I said it's tough it's tough and even in that can look and think you know like I said, well, if, if they would just, if they would just know this, and ultimately what you're thinking is, Labetha, if they would just, um, obey this, then I'd get what I want. That ain't it, is it? That ain't it. So the example of Jesus Christ is this. He existed in the form of God, yet he gave no thought to seizing equality with God as his supreme prize um he didn't look at it as something to be exploited you know he didn't um capitalize that opportunity for the sake of fame or fortune or you know what else is there um you know the earth the the materialism he could have i mean we know this full well you know he owned it all already he didn't come to floss he didn't come to floss. There you go. <laughs> he didn't come to floss. Instead, he emptied himself of his outward glory by reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant. He became human. He humbled himself and became vulnerable, choosing to be revealed as a man and was obedient. He was a perfect example, even in his death, a criminal's death by crucifixion. I'm just going to check the footnotes out for a second. <clears throat> I mean, you know, that's like, that's like maybe the CEO of a, some huge billion dollar company or something, um, deciding to join the, I don't know, the janitor staff for a month or something to see you know to get to the heart of their issues to come down there and and find out firsthand what it is to be a janitor for a month and how to um, you know pave a better path for them come on how to show them how to come from there up to CEO um, you know he did that he did that can we think about who we could um, who we could reach down, so to speak, to in that way? Um, 
you know, having overcome, we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Who can our testimony touch um, that can help bring them out? <clears throat> but then, like I said, from, you know, from Jesus to human, from CEO to janitor, how can we um, seemingly lower ourselves? Jesus actually was coming lower. We just think or somebody, right, um, to help someone that, you know, how often do we think, well, I don't have to do that because I've got this. Why would I do that when I can, when I can afford this over here? Why would I, you know, whatever the case, eat there, drive that, wear that, I don't know. Um, but, you know, in humility, why would we um, why wouldn't we if it could help someone else see the light of Christ? If we're truly putting their needs before our own, if we're really considering them more important than ourselves. Um, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love when the Spirit, I mean, the, well, the Spirit, indeed, <sighs> revealing these things. But when the Word just comes to life like that, when you really see a real life, you know, example that you can that you can reach for that you can work towards he was a perfect example even in his death a criminal's death by crucifixion because of that obedience God exalted him and multiplied his greatness he has now been given the greatest of all names because of obedience y'all because of obedience the authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence. Everything and every one will one day submit to his name. In the heavenly realm, in the earthly realm, and in the demonic realm. Every single one. And every single thing. Everyone. <laughs> Listen, they all came into existence by the by the word of his mouth certainly they will all submit certainly they will all bow to the very name above every name every tongue will proclaim in every language <clears throat> i love that in every language jesus christ is lord yahweh bringing glory and honor to god his father and there's a long note hear about Yahweh. Let's see. Yahweh and Jehovah are the highest names for God. I notice I moved around again today, trying to get better lighting and better positioning or whatever. This is not the most comfortable chair. Let me go ahead and grumble for a second. Yahweh. Um, this verse makes it clear that the name given to Jesus at his exaltation was Lord Jehovah or Lord Yahweh. The Hebrew name for Jesus is Yeshua. God is a saving cry, literally. <laughs> God is a saving cry, Yeshua which bears and reveals the name Yahweh. Yeshua, which bears and reveals the name Yahweh. Jesus carries the name and reputation of his father, Yahweh, within him. Yes. Yes, indeed. Okay. So, my beloved ones, just like you've always listened to everything I've taught you in the past, I'm asking you now, to keep following my instructions as though I were right there with you. Now you must continue to make this new life fully manifested as you live in the holy awe of God, which brings you trembling into his presence. Continue to make this new life fully manifested as you live in the holy awe of God. Okay, so he's not just going to do it all for me. He's not just going to... Um, you know, I don't get to just wait and see what he does. It, you mean it isn't just what it is? 
No. He says, you must continue to make this new life fully manifested as you live in the holy awe of God. You have to choose to be to come trembling into his presence. You have to choose to remember, be reminded constantly by any means necessary how holy he is and be in awe of that. Um, you know, Paul really just spells it all out for us if we only will study to show ourselves approved, if we only will be doers and not hearers only, if we'll just get in there and get, get it in here. Amen? You must continue to make this new life fully manifested as you live. Let me see what the footnotes say on that. Push through the service of your life or work the work of your life. You're already saved, and now there's work to do. You didn't have to work to get accepted. You didn't have to work to get washed in the blood. You only had to call on him and believe that he is who he says he is. Cling to him. Turn from all that, all that mess. Leave that old you behind. Let it be crucified with Christ and raised to walk in newness of life with him. But you know, you only have to come and surrender all <clears throat> and freely be saved. But then you must continue to make this new life fully manifested as you live. The work, work the work of your life is the literal, um, Aram well, not literal, no, it does not say that. The Aramaic can be translated Push through the service of your life or work the work of your life. Come on, somebody. <laughs> In holy awe of God, which brings you trembling into his presence, God will continually revitalize you, implanting within you the passion to do what pleases him. Again, you will be transformed <clears throat> into someone who wants what God wants. Um, as you continue to work the work of your life as you continue to make you must continue to make this new life fully manifested and in turn god will implant you with the passion to do what pleases him continually revitalizing you your seeking comes first your um your desire This is beyond, this is the maintenance work, right? This is the maintenance work of remaining in him. I mean, let's just shoot it straight, y'all. This is the word of God. Let's shoot it straight, those who endure to the end. So live a cheerful life without complaining or division among yourselves. For then you will be seen as innocent, faultless, and pure children of God. Even though you live in the midst of a brutal and perverse culture. Woo! Word, Paul. Don't we know it? And on that footnote, it says, see Deuteronomy 32 verses 5 and 6. Oh, I was going to flip to it too, and this is New Testament only. I forgot. Okay, I'm in another room, so. <clears throat> another time on that, I'd encourage y'all to do that. See 32, I mean Deuteronomy 32 verses 5 and 6 <clears throat> in reference to being in the midst of a brutal and perverse culture and still being seen as innocent, faultless, and pure children of God. Mature children of God. So, for you will appear among them as shining lights in the universe, holding out the words of eternal life. We've got to be different. We've got to be different. He doesn't leave you the same. He does not leave you the same. If it's not evident that you're different, if it's not evident that you're a child of God, help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus, to shine our lights. For you will appear among them as shining lights in the universe, holding out the words of eternal life. I, that brings to mind when Peter said, Lord, where would we go? You have the words of eternal life. And now here we are with the words of eternal life that Jesus left with us, that he continues to, to um, pour into us. 
that he fills us with as we seek him and seek that feeling and are willing to empty, be emptied of ourselves that we might be filled with his light so it can shine forth. You know, this is just carrying on really what we've been talking about all week. Praise God, you know. He meant this and he wants us to get this in um, so that it can come out. I haven't labored among you for nothing, Paul says. For your lives are the fruit of my ministry and will be my glorious boast at the unveiling of Christ. But I will rejoice even if my life is poured out like a liquid offering to God over your sacrificial and surrendered lives of faith. And so no matter what happens to me, you should rejoice in ecstatic celebration with me. Paul's like, even unto death, I can know that God used me, that my purpose was fulfilled, that I, it's not been in vain. I haven't labored for nothing. And King James probably says they're in vain. For your lives are the fruit of my ministry and will be my glorious boast at the unveiling of Christ. The day, the great and terrible day of the Lord. Um, So yet I am trusting in our Lord Jesus that I may send Timothy to you soon so I can be refreshed when I find out how you're doing. Timothy is like no other. He carries the same passion for your welfare that I carry in my heart. For it seems as though everyone else is busy seeking what is best for themselves instead of the things that are most important to our Lord Jesus Christ. Mmm, what a word right there, Paul. I need to post that today. I'll post that today. Philippians 2, 21, for it seems as though everyone else is busy seeking what is best for themselves instead of the things that are most important to our Lord Jesus Christ. If he is most important to you, won't you be seeking the things that are most important to him? So you already know about his excellent reputation since he has served alongside me as a loyal son in the work of the ministry. Back to talking about Timothy after I see what transpires with me he's the one I will send to you to bless you and I'm trusting in my Lord to return to you in due time hmm. oh shoot okay not too late yet just remember I gotta get Lenny up okay so but for now, Paul says, I feel a stirring in my heart to send Epaphroditus back to you immediately. He's a friend to me and a wonderful brother and fellow soldier who has worked with me as we serve as ministers of the gospel. And you sent him as your apostle to minister to me in my need. But now he is grieved to know that you found out he had been sick, so he longs to return and comfort you in this. You know, Epaphroditus is kind of homesick. He came from them, so Paul's going to send him back. Uh, to be reunited with his church home, his, you know, his family. It's true he almost died, but God showed him mercy and healed him. I'm so thankful to God for this healing, as I was spared from having the sorrow of losing him on top of all my other troubles. You can see why I'm delighted to send him to you now. I know that you're anxious to see him and rejoice in his healing, and it encourages me to know how happy you'll be to have him back. So warmly welcome him, home in the Lord, with joyous love, and esteem him highly, for people like him deserve it. Because of me, he put his life on the line, despising the danger, so that he could provide for me with, or I'm sorry, pro, well, yeah, that's what it says, provide for me with what you couldn't since you were so far away. And he did it all because of his ministry for Christ. Do you know how fitting is that? Because he just slips that in there about um, Timothy and Epaphroditus that, you know, shows them witnesses of their being examples of what what he was just um, preaching on, what he was just teaching about, um, about putting others before yourselves and so on. So Philippians chapter 3, a call to rejoice and a warning. My beloved ones, don't ever limit your joy or fail to rejoice in the wonderful experience of knowing our Lord Jesus. I don't mind repeating what I've already written 
you because it protects you. <laughs> Y'all know I don't mind. I don't mind repeating either. <laughs> Beware of those religious hypocrites who teach you that you should be circumcised to please God. For we have already experienced heart circumcision, and we worship God in the power and freedom of the Holy Spirit, not in laws and religious duties. Not, not in sinning when we feel like it either. A lot of people take this, um, you know, call against legalism, this uh, striking down of legalism that's very clear in the word, um, which is according to the letter of the law, in the rituals, not in the, not in the, the act of living holy, not in the act of refraining from sin, abstaining, um, and remaining pure, not in that way, but so many take that and want to apply it to their sins. <laughs> I just had to throw that in there. Anyways, we are those who boast in what Jesus Christ has done and not in what we can accomplish in our own strength. It's true that I once relied on all that I had become. It happens. It definitely happens. And oh, how rough the reminders can be, y'all. Be careful to remain reverent. Be careful to remember that without Jesus, you're still the old man. You're still the old man without the Lord. It can be real easy, and that's why Paul addresses it so often, to start to think that it's something about something you accomplished, that it's something you were able to do. Um, be careful to be confident in the Lord and not your own strength. Amen. So he said, I had reason to boast and impress people with my accomplishments more than others, for my pedigree was impeccable. Pickable, you know his his upbringing, his knowledge of the scripture, his work in the church. I mean, he. That's one thing about Paul, and I think it's why, um, the Lord so readily used him. He did have the fervency. He did have the, like the desire, the motivation, the passion. He was just directing it, um, wrong due to a lack of knowledge. Due to a lack of knowledge. Um, once he knew the Lord Jesus, once he had um, experienced him for himself, he submitted, he surrendered, and became huge, you know, became huge to us, to the faith itself, to the whole um, ministry of the gospel. But the passion for God was there. It was just misdirected. Um... Due to religion, hello, due to religion, due to the very things he's preaching against now, the laws and religious duties. See, in with Jesus came the compassion and the love in it all. Not to compromise and tolerate and condone sin, but to give another chance. Um, the redemption. The redemption. Praise God. Praise God. So his pedigree was impeccable. Um, so here he goes into his, into his testimony. I was born a true Hebrew of the heritage of Israel as the son of a Jewish man from the tribe of Benjamin. I was circumcised eight days after my birth and was raised in the strict tradition of Orthodox Judaism, living a separated and devout life as a Pharisee. And concerning the righteousness of the Torah, no one surpassed me. I was without a peer. Furthermore, as a fiery defender of the truth, I persecuted the Messianic believers with religious zeal. Yet all of the accomplishments that I once took credit for, I've now forsaken them. And I regard it all as nothing compared to the delight <laughs> of experiencing Jesus Christ as my Lord. It's like, listen, all of that religion, all of that training, all of that legalism is nothing compared to delighting in the Lord. Truly to know Him meant letting go of everything from my past and throwing all my boasting on the garbage heap. It's all like a pile of manure to me now. Dung, you know, is, 
is what um, King James says. It's a pile of poop compared to the, the grace of the Lord Jesus. He said, it's all like a pile of manure to me now so that I may be enriched in the reality of knowing Jesus Christ and embrace him as Lord in all of his greatness. And in so doing, you don't become so carefree that you laugh at sin and take it lightly. What happens in, in coming so close to him in the reality of knowing Jesus and embracing him as, in, as Lord in all of his greatness is becoming more like him and less like you. Burying more and more of that old sinful man and more and more of the likeness of Christ being resurrected in your life. So my passion is to be consumed with him and not cling to my own righteousness based in keeping the written law. My only righteousness will be his based on the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, the very righteousness that comes from God. And how much more powerful is that than the law, right? How much more powerful is the very righteousness that comes from God rather than that that comes from us trying to do right. Um, it's not going to look like something worse than the legalist and the religious and those following those rituals and keeping that letter of the law. Um, it's not going to look less holy than them. It's going to be more so. Um, with the grace and love and just the embodiment of his spirit. Um, fulfillment, that's where he is the fulfillment of the law and it actually being on the inside like it's like he said circumcision of the heart rather than the flesh so rather than going through the motions of being righteous we now get to actually become that by being the hands and feet of our head the Lord Jesus Christ so now I continually long to know the wonders of Jesus and to experience the overflowing power of his resurrection working in me. I will be one with him in his sufferings and become like him in his death. This feels like a good time to remind ourselves that Paul was only human too. We're always running around here hollering on him only human as an excuse for why we do so much wrong. How about it be a testimony of how great God is and all the right that we do anyways by the power of the Holy Ghost? Um, there's not anybody in this Bible that was less human than us except Jesus himself and the Lord himself. I mean, the people that he made great examples of. It was, it was the God's making there that was big, not the people, not the people, not the people. So, um, you know, there are, there are Pauls out there still today. And we need them, we need them rised up and the Lord is raising them up. Praise God, praise God, praise God. So only then, is that where I got to? Yeah, I will be like him. I will be one with him in his sufferings and become like him in his death. Only then will I be able to experience complete oneness with him in his resurrection from the realm of death. And I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing. Amen. But he's pursuing it. That's the key. No, he's not acquired it. Because it's beyond his power to acquire it. But he's pursuing it with whatever power he does um, contain to pursue it with. I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me to make me his own. Come on, one more time on that, y'all. Woo! I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me to make me his own. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past. <laughs> all of it. I get to just forget it, y'all. The Lord said he did. 
I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. These aren't just some lofty words on a page. This is reality for those who are willing to go there with him. This is reality, y'all. This is the prescription of what we should all in Christ be doing and be about. The evidence that should be shown in our lives, the light that should be shining. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. So let all who are fully mature have this same passion. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, if you're not yet gripped by these desires, God will reveal it to you. The Aramaic says, those who don't run this way, God will reveal it to them. Thank you, Lord, for the mercy in revealing. You know, we could just go ahead and say, you know, you had your chance. Thank you that it will be revealed. Let all of us advance together to reach this victory prize following one path with one passion. It's like, listen, folks, there's only one way to get there. And, you know, so often um, you'll hear, well, that's, that's not my way. That's not my truth. That's not how I, you know, those are excuses and those are cop-outs. And the thing about it is we've all got them. But um, this one passion and one path comes from this one word of God. And there's enough, more than enough there um, to focus on and off of those things that are divisive. To focus on these things which are um, designed to bring about unity. Which will, will absolutely, like shall, bring about unity, right? So... One path and one passion. <laughs> Just reflecting inward, we, inwardly a little bit on that, but that's not something that I want to share. But yeah, um, you know, in trying to urge one another along toward love and good deeds sometimes, that passion is not shared. And it's hard to accept when you're the passionate one. Um, the not so passionate ones so will be like, you know, it don't take all that. You know, that's your way. It, you don't get to. But listen, when that passionate one is getting all their stuff from the word of God, it's not them either. It's him. It's him. Think of who you're actually denying. Think of who you're actually disputing there. If it's aligned with the word of God, it's not just that person. You're coming against God himself. And that is a dangerous place to be. But anyways, let's go on with Paul. My beloved friends, imitate my walk with God and follow all those who walk according to the way of life we modeled before you. For there are many who live by different standards. <laughs> I can't make it up, y'all. This is what I was just getting to. As I've warned you many times, I weep as I write these words. There are enemies of the cross of the anointed one and doom awaits them. Their God, little g, has possessed them and made them mute. Their God is their belly, which means, or I'm sorry, which is meaningless to the average English speaker. Okay, their God is their belly. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. He's just, he translated it differently because, in other words, he's saying most people are not going to understand what the God, their God is their belly means. So he says it that way, which is, I lost my place. <laughs> um, their God has possessed them and made them mute. Well, see, to me, that's that's more hard to understand than the, their God is their belly. When your belly is hungry, you feed it. And um, when you put that above, when you put it, it, the same for everything else, really. I mean, if we're living just to satisfy our flesh, um, you know, you are catering to it when you feel you're following your feelings and following your heart um 
And when you put that first, that is your God. Whatever you put first is your God. And that's basically what he's saying. Um, so, their boast is in their shameful lifestyles and their minds are in the dirt. Well, say that then, Paul. Their minds are in the dirt. And you know what? It was not... No wonder that didn't make sense. Oh, no. Yeah, it was. Okay. Thinking out loud again. Sorry. Their conscience is in the ground. Their head's in the sand, right? That's what. That's the one that we know. Their boast is in their shameful lifestyles, and their minds are in the dirt. I mean, how many boast about shameful? Oh, good grief. Most boasting, you know, will be so, actually. So we are a colony of heaven on earth as we cling tightly to our life giver, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our humble bodies and transfigure us into the identical likeness of his glorified body. And using his matchless power, he continually subdues everything to himself. Wow. Wow. So much right there. Let me check out these footnotes. Our citizenship um, of heaven. We're a colony of heaven on earth. Do, 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 do. In every church, there is often found conflict in relationships. Paul seeks to encourage these two dear women. Oh, okay, never mind. That's starting into chapter 4 there. Okay. Oh, goodness. Cold coffee. Let me see what time it is. 6.09? Ah, uh, it's the last chapter, though. I really need to get Lydia up so we can get down there a little early. I thought of something this morning as soon as I woke up that I need to do for prep that's going to make my morning a little longer. So, I mean, it's not even, it's one page. I'm just going to read it. I can't, I can't not finish. I'm Philippians. I am going to finish this cold coffee before it gets any colder. Okay, Ugh. so living in harmony with one another, my dear and precious friends, whom I deeply love, you have truly become my glorious joy and crown of reward. Now arise in the fullness of your union with our Lord. And I plead with Yodia and Sintish to settle their disagreement and be restored with one mind in our Lord. I would like my dear friend and burden bearer to help resolve this issue for both women have diligently labored for me or with me for the prize and helped in spreading the revelation of the gospel along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers. All of their names are written in the book of life. Silly cats. Be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season of life. Let your joy overflow, and let gentleness be seen in every relationship, for our Lord is ever near and approaching, most definitely. Don't be pulled in, <clears throat> excuse me, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, admirable, <laughs> beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind. Listen, if you're thinking about all that, it said keep your thoughts continually fixed on those things. That's another point where we have to realize it takes effort. It, we have to realize it's not going to be an excuse that somebody else is watching that on TV. So I, I, you know, it fell on my eyes too, right? I end up watching it too. Or, well, it's not my fault they were listening. I can't control what they, you know, 
stop with the excuses. The word says plainly, keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and ad admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind. The ways of the Lord, the fruit of the Spirit, the, um, the goodness of God. If we're continually focused on that stuff, we're not going to have time for the garbage, um, for the grumbling, for the negative, for the, you know, look at the bright side is actually a command for us. So um, take heed to that. I definitely need to take heed to, heed to that. <laughs> Keep your thoughts continually fixed on the goodness of God is how I could sum up that whole um, paragraph there. So praising him always, it says, fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. Put into practice the example of all you have heard from me or seen in my life, says Paul, and the God of peace will be with you in all things. And see, Paul, it seems like he's boasting, but he is, and he is, but it's in Christ. He knows full well that it's not him, that it's the goodness of God, right? But he's still got that confidence because that's where that confidence lies, is in the Lord Jesus. And he has accomplished. He has proven this path to be successful. He has allowed God to, um, you know, work this, um, work this work in him. These works, many miracles and signs and wonders. And he's proved you know, he's like, listen, I'm a good example here because my life is the proof of the teachings that I'm teaching you. It is possible. You can't tell me it's not because I'm walking in it, right? Um, and now then, God saw fit to keep it in his eternal word, for it to be a part of the, his eternal word. So therefore, I mean, listen, don't argue with God. Don't argue with God. Don't let your excuses over power over you know shadow that's it don't let them overshadow the capabilities that the word promises because that word is always going to out outweigh you know your opinion your excuses and your opinions amen amen to that one there goes his alarm let me let me do that real quick i know it's going to be one or the other Rise and shine, my love. Okay, let's finish up chapter four here. Yeah, I don't think I read the time right while ago, so we have to hurry. And if I would quit commentating, right? Commenting, commentating. Anyway, put into practice the example that you've heard from me or seen in my life. So Paul thanks the Philippians for their support. My heart overflows with joy when I think of how you demonstrated love to me by your financial support of my ministry. For even though you have so little, you still continue to help me at every opportunity. I'm not telling you this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be satisfied in any circumstance. Amen. I know what it means to lack. I know what it means to experience overwhelming abundance. For I'm trained in the secret of overcoming all things, whether in fullness or in hunger. I love that. I'm trained in the secret of overcoming all things. I find that the strength of Christ's explosive power infuses me to conquer every difficulty. Amen. Of course, to master all things. You know, that is the secret of overcoming all things that he is trained in. He's learned to turn to Jesus with all of it. Take it to Jesus. And sometimes it literally means just praying through the moments, just clinging, you know, crying out until, until, because everything is going to pass. Nothing is going to stay um, in, this, in the natural. Nothing is going to remain 
the same for long, right? If you don't like something, just wait. It's not going to stay the same. It's going to change, right? So, and especially circumstances like he's talking about, and especially in the situations that he allowed the Lord to lead him through, that he surrendered to in the name of Jesus. He was constantly going to the next thing, doing something different. So you've so graciously provided for my essential needs during this time or season of difficulty. For I want you to know that the Philippian church was the only church that supported me in the beginning as I went out to preach the gospel. You were the only church that sowed into me financially, and when I was in Thessalonica, you supported me for over a year. I mention this not because I'm requesting a gift, but so that the fruit of your generosity may bring you an abundant reward. I now have all I need, more than enough. I'm abundantly satisfied. For I've received the gift you sent by Epaphroditus and viewed it as a sweet sacrifice, perfumed with the fragrance of your faithfulness, which is so pleasing to God. I'm convinced that my God will fully satisfy every need you have, for I have seen the abundant riches of glory revealed to me through Christ Jesus. And here we go. This is our this is our blessing to wind it up today because we're at the end of Philippians. And um, I'm going to hop off after this. So I'm going to repeat that one because it was great. And I'm not quite through there yet when I realized, hey, this is, this is that. <laughs> So I'm convinced that my God will fully satisfy every need you have, for I have seen the abundant riches of glory revealed to me through Jesus Christ. And God our Father will receive all the glory and the honor throughout the eternity of eternities. Amen. And then, of course, he says, Give my warm greetings to all the believers in Christ Jesus. All the brothers and sisters that are here with me send their loving greetings, especially the converts from Caesar's household. May the grace and favor of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. I second that, Paul. May the grace and favor of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. On today, throughout the weekend, which um, I, think, I think I'll be on this weekend. Anyways, until next time, the Lord bless you and keep you. I love you and Jesus loves you more than anybody else ever could. Try it and see. Taste and see how good he is. Um, come and see. I can't prove it, but he certainly can, and he will, and he wants to. He wants to answer your call today. So call. Give him a call. In Jesus' name, amen.